Hi, I'm Dennis, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my journeys into FreeBSD, FreeBSD 13, patch number four to be exact. <laughs> and unfortunately, my journey is going to take a little longer. Uh, I'm just, I, I don't really have the time to really invest in it and to make great video or good tips video. And we're going to have to actually just kind of put FreeBSD on a hiatus and take care of other things at this point. Not saying I'm quit creating videos, I'm just saying that I'm going to quit. I've reached a point in FreeBSD where I'm going to stop learning about it for now. I'm going to keep using it, but I'm not going to pursue anything. If, if I need to do something that I can't do on FreeBSD, I got two other machines sitting right here that can do it, running Arch Linux, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. So <clears throat> I'm not trying to uh, discourage anybody from using FreeBSD. And you might ask yourself, what is the difference between FreeBSD or BSDs and Linux? So if you compare on there, well, I'll put these links. I got a couple of great links here that you might want to look at. At their in their own handbook, they got. So what is really the difference between, say, Debian Linux, Linux and FreeBSD? For the average user, the Linux is surprised. The difference is surprisingly small. Let's see. Does not apply to Linux distributions in the following section. The description applies, which accounts for an estimated 80% of all the BSD installations are, are FreeBSD. But the difference is from the NetBSD, OpenBSD, and DragonflyBSD are very small. No one person or corporate corporation on BSD is created and distributed by a community of highly technical committed contributors all over the world. Some of the components of BSD are open source projects in their own right and managed by different project maintainers. No one person controls it. On the other hand, there is a central repository for all your packages, uh, projects maintain that. This is an important part right here. I noticed this the very first time I installed FreeBSD and started actually trying to install software. BSD is a complete operating system. For example, when I first it downloaded and installed Network Manager, or network MGR. It came with the applet and all the software that it was going to need to run. Whereas in other distributions, you might have to actually install the applet separately. So I noticed that right off the bat, and you will too. One of the major differences I found this website right here, Edu CBA. I'll put this in the make sure it gets in the notes. But it's talking about here, it's a great website, by the way. It's got the differences between a lot of subjects. The differences between Linux and FreeBSD, and I'm going to skip past most of that because most of it I just read. The kernel versus operating system. Linux is more like a kernel. Without the kernel, it won't run. FreeBSD is a complete operating system, which is what I just said. Licensing is a little different. Linux is licensed under the GNU General Public License, the GPL. FreeBSD has its own license. SMP support. Linux has excellent support for SMP. FreeBSD has good support. Well, I didn't even know what SMP was, so I, I looked it up and I'll make sure this gets in the titles as well. It boils down to handling multi-core processors or even multi-processors and <clears throat> it does say that linux or i'm sorry freebsd usually will not exceed 16 processors so if you had something that had a 72 core processor or whatever those big ones are you might have a problem according to this article go back to the comparison the package management uh, they're using debian as a reference here but most of the Linuxes have a good package delivery system app git or pacman in my case the package management in freebsd is excellent especially in the ports and binary areas 
community and vendor support. Linux has good community support, so does FreeBSD. Oracle or ERP application. Linux supports all types of Oracle or ERP applications. FreeBSD does not support any of those. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> so here we go. It says, what is Oracle ERP applications? Oracle ERP applications or is a cloud-based software solution used to automate back office processes and day-to-day -day business activities. It is a business management software suite that includes financial management, supply chain management, project managing, management, accounting, and procurement. Okay, uh, that might affect you if you're doing something commercially or what have you, but for the end user, that's not going to matter, I don't think. Performance. Linux shows a good performance. FreeBSD has excellent performance based on their resource use. Under security, Linux has good security. FreeBSD has better security than Linux. And that's a big one. For a lot of people, that should be a big one. Or let me rephrase that. For a lot of people, that is a big one. And if it's not for you, it should be. Uh, reliability, they're both reliable. Fast as it has FreeBSD, as fast as it has to use only a few rules. File system, they both have good file systems. And the last one here, it says Linux has excellent support for all Dell, HP, and IBM servers. FreeBSD doesn't have support for any of those. So as you can see, there's a lot of differences and you're going to have to just really ask yourself how far you want to push to use BSD. I've made myself a couple of notes here and this is all the stuff we just talked about. But I'm going to bring that up so I can sort of keep it in reference. In my opinion, FreeBSD is not an OS for everybody. You must be willing to dig and research and do a lot of reading and some experimentation just to use FreeBSD. Not as easy as most Linux distributions. Both the PDF handbook and the online handbooks are outdated with some of the entries I found that was dated as far back as 2013, eight years ago as of this year. And some entries are actually contradictory with each other. Also, uh, I said in the very beginning of my BSD journey that I was, the documentation is excellent, and I still say that. You know, it was not a lot of projects that I wasn't able to just to find some documentation, whether it was in the handbook or even under a, uh, a post that somebody did in one of the chat rooms or whatever they call those. I was able to find it. You know, if you're willing to, if you're willing to run Arch Linux and do that research, then this research here is going to be comparable, although a little more difficult. All right, so audio is not going to be configured and must be manually configured either through a terminal or a graphical or graphically with something like DSB mixer. You just can't plug and play a microphone or USB or U I, uh, quarter inch jack, eighth inch jack. They'll require their own configuring. If you're not willing to do that, then probably FreeBSD is not for you. Video, on the other hand, for the most part, just plain work. Uh, as soon as I make an installation, I can bring up a YouTube video and it'll play, provided I got the audio right, it'll play right. The video plays right anyway, whether you have the audio right or not. Uh, on the other hand, DVD movies and audio CDs will require their own software and some configuration to make them even work. VLC for movies works audacious for C uh, audio work. And there's other softwares that those just happen to be the two that I listed. Also, in most operating systems, Windows or Linux, and probably Mac, I'm guessing, you can have a setting in there that if you put a DVD movie into your tray and close it, it'll autoplay. Or CDs the same way, or even a blank CD, whatever. Uh, put a medium, media, medium in there and it'll autoplay. I have not found that function anywhere in any of the free BSDs. 
So if that's something that you have to have, it's not going to work for you. And you might find something. If you do, please let me know. Uh, memory sticks are hit and miss. I got some that are come out of the same box, and it will not recognize one, whereas it'll recognize the other. And it's just, you don't know. You have to just plug it in and find out. <laughs> At least that's my experience so far. Just just because you connect to an external hard drive up through USB does not mean that FreeBSD is going to automatically pick it up without some sort of configuring. All right. A major throwback or a major fault, I guess, is flat packs, app, in, app images, and dev softwares are not available in FreeBSD, either through binaries or ports. Or anyway, you just, they're not there. Okay. So some of the pros about using FreeBSD is they've been here a long time and you can just assume that they're very stable. And from what I've seen on YouTube and the web, security is rated very high on the Linus scale or Linus scale. I have not run that test myself, but the evidence all that I just showed you where it said that FreeBSD surpassed Linux in basic security. One thing about the BSD journey here is I have found most, I can't say all, but most of the software, all the software that I require for video creation, creating is available and it's other things that are not. So you can't get everything, for instance, the GNOME system or GNOME disk utility, that's one that you're not going to get or hard info system profile, benchmarking profile, you're not going to get those. So you're going to find some small things. However, there are usually workarounds. It does have a package manager called OctoPackage, and it seems to work very well. I mean, I've had no problems with it. And it gives you instructions just like it would if you did it in a terminal. All right. Cons, what I list as a con. And I said this in the beginning. If you're not the kind of person that's willing to put hands on to try to figure out and configure a system to make it do the things that you want it to do, i.e. typing or burning CDs, what have you. When I said typing, I meant printing. Unless you're willing to, to do some research and find out about these things, then free BSD is not for you. Any of the BSDs are probably not for you. The gaming situation is another hit and miss situation as far as free BSDs, or I'm assuming all BSDs go. I did see where there's a, apparently Steam can be installed with a very long list of configurations in conjunction with other software to pre-install and configure. And that's this link right here, the Linux later. And I'm not even going to go into that, but apparently it can. You can, but it's going to require work. Some of the software that's not available, I've already touched on that, hard info and GNOME disk utility. Uh, using ports is another hit and miss. For some reason, I have not successfully installed anything using ports. It goes so far, and then it fails. And I've tried through VirtualBox, HPLIP, and K3B, and they all failed. And I'm not sure why. Uh, it would say it needed a, a package. I would install the package. It still wouldn't help. <laughs> so that's a con. So if you're not willing to work and try to figure out what things happen, I personally enjoy that kind of stuff for the most part. <laughs> I get aggravated sometimes because I can't find the answer I'm looking for. And usually that's when I stumble over it. <laughs> so it, that's a con. As far as FreeBSD and the normal typical end user, most end users are not that uh, hacker, not going to want to go into the configuration and all that stuff. So Linux is probably a better choice. But if you make the choice to go with FreeBSD, it's going to be solid. And so I'm going to keep FreeBSD. I'm not saying this is going to be my last FreeBSD video, period. Because I'm going to keep it on the computer that it's running on right now, Optiplex Small Form Factor 7010. And so I'll use that. I mean, I utilize it in making this video, for instance, and all the editing and such. So uh, 
So if you're not requiring any kind of strange or esoteric software that's way out there somewhere, FreeBSD is going to work for you. As long as you don't mind doing some tinkering, it's a good operating system. A lot of people don't want to tinker. I just happen to be one of those tinkerers. <laughs> and you just got to admit, it's totally different than Linux or Windows or Mac. It's completely by itself. One of the things that I like about it is, is its low system resource usage. It just seems to uh, work really well. You might notice I changed here. I, I stopped the video and I re reworded this a little bit and put in another sentence, I guess. <laughs> it made it a little more legible for me. And uh, so I encourage you to experiment and try a new OS if you're interested. If you're tired of uh, distro hopping from Linux to Linux and you want to try something that's going to be different and you will learn something regardless. If you install it and work with it just a little while, you're, you're going to learn some things. That's not a bad thing. That's always a good thing. One thing about the BSD videos is I'm kind of, like I say, I'm kind of at a dead end right now. And so I'm not concentrating on any fresh ideas or new tips or something that I've discovered. Although I have got a few things that I've discovered and I'm, I'm eventually going to share that. But I need some help. If you if you have a, a something that you'd like for me to look at, a subject or a software or how to get something to work in FreeBSD, please feel free to ask me down below in the comments and you know, if I can, I certainly will. And I can't promise how fast I can get to it, but I will. I, I read all the comments, what few there are. <laughs> Sorry. I do read them. And if you have a question in there, I'll try to find the answer. Like what I can't promise about any kind of time frame. If you've been watching my channel, you know that my time has changed and I can't just really allocate all what I want to do. I mean, I would love to just sit right here. <laughs> and Pinker, but you just can't do that. But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching. You guys have a great day, evening, night, whatever you, and I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on another video. Peace out. Bye.